All right, beloveds. All right. You want to hear from me? You will hear from me. Okay. Here we go. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Let this video record that. Like all of these other videos, I have not done or said anything that the Spirit did not allow me to. And in my upbringing, I took the Holy Spirit gives command. I have never disobeyed God. <clears throat> Love is not easily offended, and neither am I. No. So please take my words as gentle and from love. Okay. Now, I was learning what people would do with my word and experiencing it firsthand in a four-square church same one Amy McPherson founded in Echo Park <clears throat> because it demonstrated the spiritual gifts and it was the closest to what I remembered and the pastor came up with an idea called reimagine grace and the whole goal was to raise enough money to break away from the Four Square Association, which it's church talk, but churches have associations that govern what they can preach, what they can't preach, and a lot more than that. So they were basically paying for a building that wasn't theirs, so they felt this was a bad deal. So they were going to raise money and buy their own building. I prayed on it and prayed on it, prayed on it. The pastor led the congregation. And yes, I know we usually handle our business behind public scenes. That's our way, I get that. But this happened long ago, and also there's no other way to handle this business unless I get involved. Thank you. <clears throat> so please, trust me on this. So, the tithe plus an extra amount. This was going to go towards the building. We, as a church family, were called and everybody agreed on it, right? First part of the plan, okay. <clears throat> I gave my last paycheck plus the tithe, okay. Because there were promises made and the verse from Ephesians was used. He is able to do more, abundantly more than you can ask or imagine, right? Reimagine grace. That's what it was called. So we had raised enough money <clears throat> and I could see that the pastor was panicking. And she was about to preach and I was uh, very young in my walk but remembering things really rapidly as far as uh, a fish to water type of thing. And the spirit told me to lay hands on her. And I walked up to her. And the standard, I feel like the Lord wants me to pray for you. Can I pray for you? And I put my hand on her head and I prayed for her. And after that, she came, she thanked me for my obedience because she said she had gotten a migraine and that message could not have been delivered unless I was obedient.
and then went to uh, the usual Wednesday service that I used to go to because that was for disciples. Yes, I'm the real thing. The real Jesus, yes. Okay, I'm glad you know. All right, let's continue. It was given to you. It was revealed to you by the Father. All right? Okay. <clears throat> And she asked in this Wednesday service, had anybody's prayers been answered? Did anybody have God do anything special for them? There was only three people, myself included, that said, yeah, God came through for us. Now, before this decision was made, and I learned this because I was in their um, elder class. She discussed things that happened behind the scenes and she said, a prophet had showed up and told her not to go through with this. And her response was, show me in scripture where it says I shouldn't go through with this. She prayed and she got her answer. So, only three people and I learned a valuable lesson that day. All of these people were following her dream, not God's. So, I then ended up roofing a certain person's mansion and one of the people from my church, and this was about three years later, had told me what happened. And I had ran into the elders too because people started leaving the church. And I had ran into them, I'd been led to them by the Holy Spirit. It takes a while to have enough uh, understanding of the whole situation because it's never quite what it seems and the information relayed to me was they had utilized that money to buy retreat property that they could rent out and make more income and they're still in that building to this day On one path, they could have broken away from the Foursquare Association, let God do what he wanted to do with the church. I spent three years letting my spirit be in that church and through her and through other pastors, helped a lot of people. <clears throat> Just to have it fall flat at the end. So me joining a church is a big, big thing. And that retreat property got taken from me. They lost it. And the people that were following the Holy Spirit, I was the last to leave. Went to other churches and were utilized there. So I trained them in that church and sent them to other churches. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is keep the promise that I made you and it won't be only three people see God work in their life. It's going to be all of my people.
what I'm doing now is unprecedented. It goes back to Old Testament times and it's part of an Issachar anointing I received, but it's also God's strategy. And it's something that is used during a time of war. <clears throat> and I've sat down with um, a very close angel of mine. And I've sat down with another angel of mine. And I've taken counsel on how best to handle this situation based on my people's needs and also the good of people everywhere. Just trust me. Because I'm going to utilize this war technique in a loving manner <clears throat> for love and to glorify Jesus Christ. Me. Because I've seen enough to know what to do and I've seen what will work what has been tried what won't work the times we're in the need for the Holy Spirit is great very very great very very great and I'm utilizing it so you'll understand very very soon keep trusting me and I love you all right.